So the climate is changing faster than our efforts to address it. There is an urgency to acting unlike anything we've seen before. If we're gonna avoid uh, committing to those truly damaging, potentially irreversible changes. The alarm bells keep ringing. Our citizens keep marching. We cannot pretend we do not hear them. We have to answer the call. rises over Pittsburgh and still the city stays hazy. Pennsylvania is the third largest producer of greenhouse gases in the US. The energy sector is among the largest emitters of greenhouse gases and other air pollutants. By 2050 we've got to cut our carbon dioxide emissions by 80 percent. Now that means cutting 80 percent of what you're 85 percent dependent on. This is a major challenge. Pennsylvania is one of the 17 states with a policy that allows customers to choose renewable energy instead of fossil fuels or nuclear energy. Still, the transition to cleaner renewable energy is beginning here slowly. So I see a very small indication of some action of the riverbank <laughs> in terms of wind power manufacturing, wind installation, solar photovoltaic cell manufacturing, photovoltaic cell R&D, but it's not much more than I would say clearing the bank for construction. I would say we're that far. I am off to visit those people who are starting to build a bridge to a sustainable energy future. Welcome to Windstacks. Yeah, this was the first, actually second, working scale prototype I built about four years ago. So Windstacks is a vertical axis wind turbine. And what that means is that it has a rotor that spins on a vertical axis as opposed to a horizontal axis like a windmill. That's traditionally what people see. All windmills will work great at 12.5 meters per second, which is the rating, the industry standard rating, uh, which is great. It, but at that speed, how often does somewhere like Pittsburgh get that speed? Well, not very often. The average is nine miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, sometimes less. So our philosophy is let's use the wind energy at the wind speeds that are prevalent in a specific area rather than ones that happen sporadically. Different philosophy. It's, a funct it's been called a functional piece of art, and it's a, it's a moniker that we're really proud of here at Windstacks. Uh, so the advantages of a vertical axis turbine are that they take much less of a footprint to, for installation, plus they capture wind from all directions. Uh, this one is going on the rooftop of the Pittsburgh Public Market, right down in the Strip District of Pittsburgh on 24th and Penn. It'll be the first urban wind turbine of its type anywhere in the United States. So it's a pretty exciting project. Many of our customers not only have wind, but they have geothermal systems, uh, they have solar systems. We design all our systems to be scalable. What is special about this place? It's the country. Out away from everything, very windy, very peaceful, and very pretty. Uh, it would be nice if it paid for everything, uh, you know, took me completely off the grid, but uh, there are days when I just don't have wind up here and I still use things in the house and the batteries get depleted. Uh, hopefully those days will be few and far between. So if it catches um, three quarters of what my power is for the year, I'd be happy with that. Sometimes you just take a flying leap and hope for the best. I don't think I'll lose my shirt, but again, it'll remain to be seen whether or not it becomes viable or not. I, th I think it's worth it. Uh, if I'm wrong, that's my loss.
none of the prices of energy is going to go down over time. I really don't believe that. Okay, the main units right here. Um, most of it is duct work. You have a uh, condenser and a blower motor. So is that your only source of heat? Yes. Yeah, it is. It, it will run longer. It doesn't get to be a hot heat like a gas furnace. What comes out of the ductwork inside isn't what you get in a normal house, so it runs a little bit longer. It actually works better as an air conditioner because you're pulling cooler temperature out and then condensing that so it actually cools uh, more quickly, more efficiently than it does heat. I'm not into the argument of coal and gas fire power plants. That's an argument that's uh, for other people, not me. So if I can do a small part to just make things use what's there. Welcome to Sunscape. The potential I see here in southwestern Pennsylvania is, is huge because there are nothing but open rooftops everywhere we look. You know, we believe that in the future people will be asking each other, what, what type of solar panels do you have? Really the way that people talk about cell phones today, you know, what type of cell phone do you have? This room here is what we call our uh, greenhouse and this is our classroom where we teach everybody about solar energy about um, different types of technologies, even financial models. So we'll go over lots of different things like types of solar panels, solar shingles. So this would go on your roof instead of shingles. This one creates AC current directly from the back. This solar panel is actually glass on glass and it produces power on both sides of the cell. This is a set of thin film chemicals that are put underneath glass to generate energy. And this is one of our flexible solar panels. If your home is energy efficient and you're not using uh, all that much energy uh, for all the things and your utility bill is under a hundred dollars a month you could usually get enough solar on your roof to power your entire home. Here are our, our meters and monitoring systems everything that's keeping track of all the different energy that's being produced on our roof. We're producing over 60 percent of our own power during the summer and spring and fall months here in Pittsburgh. We're asking them to pay for their energy up front. You're making a purchase, no different than buying a home versus renting a home, which does it make more sense to do. Exactly. Buying your energy up front ahead of time versus buying it month to month. We speak about roadblocks to a renewable energy future. There are several and they are not technological, really not. They are essentially social and institutional. We need a lot more education and we need financial assistance you know, from, from the government to help us get there. If you want less of something, you tax it. If you want more of something, you subsidize it. We need to subsidize the consumer so that it helps them make the purchase. And that's where the government has to come in. The rest of it, we will take it from there. We know what to do. Selling the problem can lead to paralysis. Selling the solution leads to inspiration, to excitement, to hope. What we need to say is what can be done at each level, in a small company, in a home, in a municipal government, in a federal facility, in a university, in any institution. Take a good hard look at what can be done and take small steps then larger steps. sure like uh, my daughters 50 years from now to look back and say my dad helped pioneer this alternative energy market when we all look back and say how ridiculous it was how much coal and gas that we burned for power. That's a mission. That's a vision. That's a vision to be proud of. <laughs>